Clerk of the Queen Anne's County School Board meeting for August the 4th, 2021. Uh, motion to move into closed session. Yes, Mr. Smith. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to move into a in a closed session to perform an administrative function to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, any other personal matter that affects one or more specific individuals, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice, and to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. We'll be back at 6 o'clock. Good, good evening. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education for August the 4th, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board members, you've had a chance to look at the minutes for July the 14th. Everybody had a chance to review those? Mm -hmm. Have a motion? motion. So, second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor for approval say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay. Now we have approval of the work session minutes for July the 21st. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Okay, the next thing we have closed session minutes for July the four, July the seventh, fourteenth, and executive close for July the seventh. Have everybody had a chance to review those? Okay. Have a motion. A move. Second. A motion. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Mr. Smith, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Okay, Dr. Salen, we're on to Shining Star. Mm -hmm. Yes, shall we? awards that we would like to present and we'll start with the shining star i believe that's listed first on the agenda i'm nominated by susan walbert yeah. oh. <laughs> good evening Better? Yeah. <laughs> okay so we have two awards this evening um nominated both by Susan Walbert, who is the principal at Churchill Elementary School, and I believe she is here. Correct, if she wants to come on up. Can I come up? Yes, please. And the first thing, the first person that we would like to recognize is Ms. Susan Peterson, who is the administrative secretary. If she would come up, please. I'd like to um, present to you the Shining Star Award, and this award recognizes someone in our school system who shines. And we have a beautiful pin here to help you shine every day, which you already do. <laughs> Ms. Peterson is the Administrative Secretary at Churchill Elementary School. Ms. Peterson maintains a calm demeanor and a cooperative, appropriate, and positive working relationship with the Churchill Elementary School staff, administrators, school district employees, students, and families. She is a tremendous support to the staff by filtering phone calls and attending to the needs of our families. Ms. Peterson is supportive and a great asset to our school's community. She shines so brightly, even the stars are in awe. <laughs> so congratulations and thank you so much for all you do. And 
this next award um, is the Energizer Bunny Award, and this time I'm going to do it right because we have two gentlemen here <laughs> that we'd really like to recognize because they sponsor this award. And um, this is sponsored by Bayview Financial with Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys, and as well Mr. Mark Humphreys. And this award is given to a staff member who volunteers um, to who keeps going. Um, so a brief, brief explanation for Amber Wright, if she would like to come up, who is the 10-month secretary. So Amber is a multitasker who can juggle and handle tasks while remaining calm and happy. She takes on every task given to her and completes the task quickly and efficiently. She understands the operations of the entire school. She has knowledge of all the students, what bus they ride, what siblings they have, and who can pick up whom. Her relationships with families is incredible and they look to her for support. We are so fortunate to have her be so efficient, such a kind person, greeting family, students, and community members. We think of her as the silent conductor of our train. So, Energizer Bunny, congratulations. board involvement. Amy, you want to? I'd be glad to, sir. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, I would like to thank everyone for coming tonight and sitting in the gallery and being a part of our meeting. It is so nice to get back to some normalcy. So thank you all. And I'm I'm not wearing a mask out of any political statement. My colleague is not is under the weather and I didn't want her to have to wear a mask by herself. So that's why I'm wearing it tonight. So thank you all very much for coming. Uh, my involvement Sorry, I just kind of sound like a frog. Um, I've been involved with the Blueprint for Maryland Schools Committee, and we've been meeting the last three Wednesday mornings, and it's been very productive. Um, we've been reviewing the, it's called the Kerwin Commission, but it's the Blueprint. We've been reviewing areas of that um, and tackling that as a committee to make sure we're meeting all the points. Um, and we have another meeting set up for the 18th. So we've been diving into the reopening plan, um, reviewing the ESSER funds and the spending categories and through surveys identified um, priorities based on that on the feedback so uh, I think we're getting a lot of work done there thank you not really school related, but I did attend the um, Ken Island Volunteer Fire Department's Carnival and saw a lot of our students there, uh, elementary, middle school, and high school. And, you know, so big hats off for that we were able to have it. Again, some normalcy. It was wonderful, a lot of fun. I did miss, well, I didn't miss, but my friend missed the clam strip, so maybe next year we'll get those back. <laughs> and saw a lot of our high schoolers participating in a lot of the booths that were put on by the volunteer fire department. So it was just so exciting to see them there and having a good time time. Um, what I'd like to bring up is our, I know we're having an outbreak again, or our numbers are coming up with metrics and it's a concern of people what's going on. And I really hope people that feel comfortable get vaccinated. It's something we need to do. But I also understand that some people have underlying health issues and have concerns about that. And I think if you do, you should talk to your primary care physician or medical professional not Facebook and not somebody at the Acme. And I think we're all in this together and we're gonna prevail. Um, Dr. Salins will have some other information. We are gonna come out on the 16th with what our final recommendations will be for opening the schools. I think that's very prudent for the fact that we'll give parents and teachers time to know what's gonna happen and things change. They're not changing like they did a year ago, but they are gonna change. And the other thing I know we have a lot of concern about this building. Let, let me acknowledge everybody. Everybody's concerned about this. I'll date myself. I did not graduate from the school. But I did, I did attend junior high here when I was in seventh grade. I remember this as being a gymnasium. I also am tied to a point in 1916 and 1917, my grandparents graduated from this school. 
So this board has to have a new facility and has to be updated in, in point. And this is not something that's happened this, this day. It's been going on for a while. I know it's controversial, and I hope we can come up with a good solution to make sure this building is a memorial and stays in some fashion to what can be done in the future. I know we're gonna have comments on it tonight, but I think this board is concerned about that. Um, <laughs> Dr. Salins is new. So this is our new superintendent for most of you that haven't met her. Um, we're in challenging times, but I guarantee you we'll make some good decisions. Thank you. Dr. Salins. Sure. So we've been hard at work staffing. I know that that's been on the forefront of everything we're doing, gearing up and getting ready for next year in the midst of um, very successful summer school opportunities for students um, and also cleaning facilities and preparing facilities for the re-entry of all of our students in the fall and actually right around the corner as of August 30th. And we're very excited about that. Um, and just to reiterate that um, I do personally interact with uh, Dr. Siotola every day. Um, whether that be email or verbally, um, every single day. So, um, you know, very connected, a very good partnership. And um, that's why the decision was made to hold off making a decision until the 16th, because we need to make sure we have all the information so that we're as informed as possible to make the best decision for our students and staff um, in a healthy, safe environment. So I know that's on the forefront of everybody's mind. So kind of stay tuned. Um, we definitely will have something coming out on the 16th and um, we'll make sure that we use all of the appropriate information to make the best solid decision we can. So thank you for your understanding in that. And all the other things are gonna come through. Mrs. Hudak, who she has a wonderful um, presentation tonight. So you'll see some really great things that are going on this summer. Hudak, you. I have hit the ground running, um, but one of the things that I have done um, since I started was I attended the Migrant Family Splash Night, which the Migrant Program right now is being held at Centerville Elementary School, and uh, parents were ser parents, students, siblings were served pizza. Uh, students received a book. It was it was just a very nice event. Um, someone from the Maryland State Department of Education came as well. Um, I I had left before she came but then I knew she was coming. Um, so that was nice that we had um, representation. Um, everything that the kids did was surrounding water. So they talked about, um, there was a lesson about hydrating. So it was a very nice event. They do have a, another one coming up this month. So um, that was kind of like, so that would be the culminating activity, but this was something that they did throughout. Um, as um, Ms. Morissette had shared, uh, we've been doing the um, blueprint um, meetings. We've had three. Um, I've been active in those and, and working with multiple stakeholders. Um, also working on the safe return to school and continuity uh, plan. So um, that has been along with interviewing and as Dr. Salins mentioned, working on filling positions. So Thank you. Okay. And Ms. Bennett. They have clam strips at Queen Anne's County. There. They do. <laughs> so you can get them there. Because right. that's my favorite thing to get at the fair. Right. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. And next thing will be public comment. Tammy. Yes, thank you. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following. Speakers sh should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have specific questions, the board will make sure that an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and, and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. Okay, thank you. Our first speaker will be Richard McNeil. And just for the record, can you state your address and... Sure. 
Good evening, uh, Richard McNeil. Uh, I live on White Marsh Road and uh, I'm president of the Queen Anne's County Retired School Personnel. And just like to say welcome to Dr. Salinas and thank you so much for the time we had uh, introducing each other. And Absolutely. welcome to uh, Ms. Hudak. Uh, I've worked with her before, so uh, you got a good person there. Thank you. Um, We'd like to, um, you know, as everybody was going through the pandemic and, and things were changed, our group was not able to meet for almost uh, two and a half years. The last time we met together was December of 19. Uh, but this past July on the 13th, we had a celebration and we were able to get back together again uh, for the first time. And we had close to 60 uh, members join us for lunch and bingo. Um, I was surprised at how competitive uh, the bingo <laughs> games got, you know, um, but we were fortunate several of our businesses in town uh, gave us um, gift cards, they, like the Acme and, and uh, Commerce Street. Uh, Edwards gave us a bunch of things and we had a, a lot from other businesses that just made it enjoyable and it was just great to kind of be in the forefront and see all these people coming together who haven't really seen each other for, for quite a while. So we look forward to uh, hopefully continuing in our meetings and so forth. And and for us, uh, we're planning, I don't have to go back to school breakfast on Monday the 30th when everybody else will be busy doing their thing. So um, we had that two years ago and it was just great for those who just retired. And uh, this idea of you've been getting up and going to a school for 30 some years or more, uh, and then all of a sudden you don't have to go there. So um, I'm enjoying that tremendously. So we, we had a great time. We will do and don't that. don't mind rubbing it in. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, we would like to do from our, our group would be to say uh, we wish you well uh, in your endeavor to get school underway on whatever normalcy that's going to be. I know that uh, the teachers that I have contact with are, are looking forward to that. I'm sure the students and the, and the parents are looking forward to that and the decisions to make it safe and uh, for everybody uh, has got to be wearing on you all and uh, the leadership teams at each building but I know that uh, you, it'll, it'll come about. Personally, my daughter starts back, she started back uh, with her professional days today. She has students coming in next Monday, so tomorrow she finds out what their protocols are gonna be. She's out in Colorado where it's their rate in their particular area is starting to rise. I think they're approaching almost 10% with the young people, those who are under 18, which is obviously for elementary, she's an elementary school teacher, so we look uh, anxious to talk with her and see how things go. So welcome to the new year. Welcome uh, to positions and so forth. And uh, good luck as, as you get underway. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the comment. Good to see you. Scott McGlashan. Oh, yeah, could, can we start with oh, right. You'd like to go a couple down? Because you're retired clerk of the court, I'll rule on that one. Is it all right if we come up together? Because we're going to have a letter of two parts. You're going to read it two parts? Okay. Jane Coppich and Patsy. So the, the buzzer will go off at three minutes and just switch over if you can, please. Well, I think we'll read fast. <laughs> Good evening. Good can you, evening. Can you just give your uh, address for the records? Yes, I'm Jane Coppich, and my address is 935 Coon Box Road, Centerville. And this letter was actually written by Commissioner Steve Wilson. It, it, it is his public um, position. It was written on July 29th, and it's the old high school is the future. This week, there was a citizen's rebellion to save the historic Centerville High School. Over 100 emails and commissioner's room filled for the first time in forever. Very encouraging to see the public completely engaged and expressive about something they wanted. Except in this case, it was something they didn't want. Having the county government demolish the old brick building opposite the Catholic Church on Chesterfield Avenue. 
For many years, this has been the administrative building for the Board of Ed. One might have thought the administrative administration and board need not distinguish themselves with further embarrassment following last year's turmoil. But as one problem ends, here's another. Suddenly, the old building becomes unfixable and a replacement is scheduled. This grand old architecture was now headed for the rubble fill. To add to the chaos, county government ne neglected to form anyone, much less consult whether this demo and rebuild was a good idea. You can bet that once you build a new building and take the workers out of the old one, it won't be long before the bats are flying in and out of the windows. The next day, the whole thing is gone in a cloud of dust, except that the citizens have made it clear that most of them don't want this, and neither do I. Knocking this building out of Chesterfield Avenue is going to leave the street with the look of someone who had their front teeth pulled. Queen Anne's County is proud of its heritage and conservative in outlook, and the building sits within a national historic district. If we are not conserving the memorial buildings, the green space, the rural feeling, the historic look, what are we conservative about? And this demolition is not necessary. A study was done by the Board of Ed and given to the county commissioners. Basically, it said they could build a replacement for 6% less than repairing the original. Of course, this would be on the outskirts of town, continuing the national process of hollowing out rural towns in order to create a donut of tan colored plastic buildings with plantings. These make everywhere look like nowhere. That's what we want for Centerville, for rent signs in the center, surrounded by a booming government bureaucracy and new fiber board castles serviced by hamburger franchise. So I'm all in with the citizens of Centerville and surrounding who don't want this building taken down or made irrelevant in the next few weeks. That will require that the commissioners to instruct the Board of Education do not spend the $2 million currently allocated I didn't read fast enough, to commission a plan for the new building. Okay. Right, my name is Patsy Mock, and I live at 300 Hope Road here in Centerville. The rest of Mr. Wilson, I want to make sure my thoughts involve more than just looking again at whether this building goes down or not. I am hoping that in this next year, which is an election year, the citizens wake up to the idea that now is a very late moment to save what we have left. The rural look and county history are one thing, but another is traffic and taxes. If we keep on building developments at a madcap rate, taxes will go up. Traffic will increase. Each new major development is a drip of cars and clutter. The drips combine into a river. It is not just torrent of cars. It is a line at the supermarket, the everyday wait, the ability to pull out on a road without sitting, 15 minutes for a break. Queen Anne's County has changed a lot in the last 15 years. And if we don't redirect how we got there, it's going to be dead awful 10 years from now. We need to slow down and quit adding whole new villages. There go the fields and farms. What's coming is what people moved here to get away from. Whether it's an immigration rush into America because it's a better place to live or move to Queen Anne's County because it's a better place to live. It won't stay better if we let things run out of control. Quite a while ago, Woody Guthrie wrote, this land is your land, this land is my land, and I believe it. If we're going to have the possibilities and freedoms we had in the past, we need to turn this thing around now. For instance, on Ken Island, the sewer capacity is about used up. State will give us no more. So if we are going to have the ability to fix the emergencies, do minor infill, save the possibility of building the house for your mother, we can't use up the very limited capacity of what's left to construct major development. The schools are now over 90% full. If we push the population up and state law makes us build a school to fit new students, there go your taxes, increased by about 10%. I don't think you want that. Please see this drive to save the high school is just part of the puzzle. The public and commissioners need to take a deep breath here and decide whether this building, these fields, that river are worth keeping. Interestingly, this isn't something we have to spend for. When fewer houses are created, the land and buildings that exist grow faster in value. Prices go up when supplies are limited. I hope we can agree about the best way forward and get there in the next year. This election coming up is going to set the direction in Queen Anne's County. Steve Wilson. I don't know if all of you know or not, but this school was completed in 1901. The first students 
attend a school here. 1903, they had their first graduate, just one person, and they were school, I mean, grades four through eight. And over the years, as the population increased, and the, and the school decided to go to 11 grades and then to 12. And of course, the school closed its doors in 1966. Now, Jane graduated in 1960. I graduated in 1961. This is their school. This is their heritage. We hate to see anything happen to it. So I just would like for you to all to sit back and, and really think, is this absolutely necessary? Could you stay here? I mean, a lot's been done to this school. So there we have it. Just think hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you send a copy of that to the commissioners? Um, for both, because a couple factual things in there I have questions about, and I'll be happy to call them later. Sure. Scott McGlashan. Both of them work, I guess, don't you, Dick? Yeah, you can talk to either one. Okay, thank you. We're listening to you. Okay. Scott McGlashan, P.O. Box 39, Churchill, Maryland. Um, lifelong resident of Queen Anne's County, graduate of this high school, uh, 1965. Uh, Dr. Marcellus, it's nice to meet you this evening and, and welcome, Thanks. I hope. <laughs> um, I just want to, to, um, to hit a couple of points here. Uh, as some of you in the room know, and maybe some don't, and for the for the purpose of the QAC TV viewers, um, I was fortunate enough to be your clerk of court for 24 years, six elections. When I came on board, Judge South told me at that point, he said, your charge is we need to look at either upgrading our courthouse or replacing it. It took 24 years for that new courthouse that we see uptown to be built. I didn't, I never had a chance to be in it, and, and that was good because I love the old courthouse. As we speak, that old courthouse is being repurposed. Let me, let us suggest, and as Commissioner Wilson said, that we filled that room up, the county commissioners, and, and I found out when I was elected official, you, you listen to the people who elect you. You're elected officials, I was elected official as the commissioners are. Now, Dr. Sale is very, very uh, rightly said, well, you know, you really need to talk to the commissioners. And, and, and yes, you are correct. But we felt it's important to come to this meeting tonight and, and express our views and our points. The most important thing is don't spend that $2 million. They said a study was done. With all due respect, nobody knew about this study, at least in the general public. I'm sure you internally you did. But, but we had studies done on the courthouse, and we finally had a courthouse committee that would consisted of, of, of important citizens and players that were involved. That's what this project needs done. Uh, maybe this building cannot be repurposed, but I think it can be. We think it can be. And let me say this. If, if you move out of this building, if you move your people out, doctor, this building is doomed. And that would be, as Mr. Wilson says, like taking your front teeth out. Um, it is going to affect the town of Centerville. I'm surprised the town of Centerville hasn't been testifying before somebody. And it's also going to affect Chesterfield Avenue. This was a land grant around here. But when you look at the streetscape here, it's going to ruin the streetscape. And we, we've seen too much happen across America where this is done. Uh, I'll reiterate, the two million should not, for that RFP, should be stopped right now. Now, um, yes, Doctor, I agree with you. You need to be, and, and the citizens need to be involved with the county commissioners. I think Mr. Uh, Commissioner Wilson is correct. I think we're going to get a majority of commissioners that agree with him. Let us hope so. Um, I think that's basically all I've got. Oh. The old courthouse has been repurposed. That's going to, and so the citizens know, and you know, the Register Will's office is going to be moved over there as, as well as the Orphan's Court. Also, there's a 911 emergency center that's going to be placed in the basement there, uh, thanks to Commissioner Wilson. But again, this building can be repurposed, and, and the facade should stay here, even if you tore everything out in the back. It can be done. Thank you very much. And, and again, Doctor, welcome to Queen Anne's County. You, you're, and I know you're, as I said to you earlier, I know your brother, <laughs> and uh, good family. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I just want to reiterate one little thing. 
personal names and certainly nothing was set out of bounds, but this could be is a board decision. Dr. Salins is the superintendent. We it just come on board with us. We quest things that we need for our school system. This board sets up things in our capital plans and have been in our capital plans for many a year. So it's putting a lot of, it's not the weight on her. It should be addressed to this board uh, at five board members. Mark's not here, but that's who it should be addressed to. And Dr. Salins will be a major part of that decision, but don't, don't, uh, don't put her right underneath this right away. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we will do the right thing. <laughs> okay, Bill Sharp. Thanks, thanks for having me here tonight, by the way. Thank you very much. Bill. Appreciate it. Bill. <laughs> you done? No. Okay. You, Mr. Higgs? Yes. Good evening. Um, I'm Eugene Higgs. Um, you state your address. I know. Oh, 441 Cox Sawmill Road in Henderson, Maryland. The next mailbox down past me is Centerville, so I'm still in Queen Anne's County. <laughs> and um, where I'm here tonight is uh, a member of the Centerville High School alumni. And. Uh, we, we have strong feelings on this building. And it, I went to school here from grade seven through 12. And as Dick knows, it's it was a junior, senior high school. And we spent six years in this school and it just means a lot to us, this building does. And we really, really hate to see anything happen to it. And uh, the way it's, way it's going now, if, if things proceed the way they're scheduled to be, they want to be done, this school will be doomed. It, like Scotty said, it's it's not gonna, if, if something doesn't come into this building and take the place of you guys, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna survive. And as you r ride down Chesterfield Avenue and look up to this building and say, my, that's a majestic looking building. It really is a nice looking building. It's old, historic, and there's a lot of memories in this building. And to see it gone would be would be a tragedy. It would really be a tragedy. And we understand that, you know. There's two options for this. They can be renovated or a new building put up. But if a new building's put up, it's gone. It's gone. It's not. It's not unless it's repurposed for some something else. And we we think you know the studies ought to be done to before you make the big step. We would love when Board of Education came into this building. We said good it's got a good purpose now to last for generations and generations and we think that renovating this building and it's possible it's it's not out of the limits that this building will last a long long time and we hope that you guys do the right thing and re renovate this building and stay in here we love to keep you in here our alumni, I don't know if um, you're aware of it, but our alumni is very active. And um, this year, this year, as long as, as well as other years in the past, we have, uh, we do a very good scholarship program. And we, we had 17 scholarship winners this year for a total of $29,000. And we try and do that close to that figure every year if, if they apply. And this will go on for generations and generations, even after we're gone. So we just hope you guys do the right thing and keep it, keep your offices here, keep Centerville High School alive and well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Raven Bishop. short. <laughs> um, President Smith, may I please ask some um, proceed? Oh, sure, of course. Raven Bishop, 719 Main Street, Church Hill. May I 
ask um, some procedural questions before I begin my time? Uh -huh. um, my first question is um, for regarding public comment. I understand the public comment can also be made at the end of board meetings. Is that correct? Right. Can an individual make comments at both the beginning and the end of a meeting? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, second. Uh, we, we do not respond to comments. We will respond to if the necessary person needs to be, but we are not going to have a conversation. So that's certainly. So really, we need you to go on with what you want to talk. Certainly. Thank you. Second clarifying question. Um, is the decision about mask wearing, does that sit with this board? I, we're not going to go back and forth on answering questions. Like I just said, uh, you can send any email to any of us board members separately or Dr. Salins. Uh, but this uh, Dr. Salins as superintendent of schools do ma does make decisions for the school system on a daily basis. That's all I'm going to say. So if you could just go on with your... Okay, thank you. So I am operating under the assumption, given that the, uh, the choice about mask wearing in Queen Anne's County Public Schools does rest with this board. Um, I'm here today to register my concern and my dismay at the letter we received um, that stated, amongst other things, the, the letter was titled Mask Letter, and it was a masking update that was sent to us, though it mentioned other things. Um, I, I'm dismayed that at the um, encouragement of mask wearing instead of a requirement for mask wearing in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I'm the parent of an eight-year-old who is not eligible for a COVID vaccine. And so the only thing standing between my child and COVID is a layered approach, which necessarily means masking amongst other procedures to keep him safe. I am terrified to send my child back to school in the fall, especially with what we know about the Delta variant. I feel that the decision to not require masking in Queen Anne's County Public Schools cuts off my child's access to a public education. I think it is a horrible thing for Maryland to kick the decision-making process all the way down to local boards. And I would hope that other parents who are terrified to send their children to school in Queen Anne's County Public Schools would join me in contacting officials at the state level to remove that burden from our school boards. I'm also here to register my unfortunate um, lack of confidence in this board's ability to make uh, decisions for the safety of my child in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And I feel this board deserves to know why. During this COVID pandemic, I have watched members of this board choose not to wear masks, even when state and school system-wide masking policies were in place. That has eroded my confidence and frankly, public confidence in this board's ability to make decisions about the health and well-being of our children while in school. I, I'm further confused because the newly elected members of this board ran on a political campaign of keeping politics out of school. And I don't know how to interpret the choice to not wear a mask while mask mandates are in place as anything other than a political statement. So I'm confused what we meant by keeping politics out of school. And I can only imagine that what that meant was it's only your politics that are allowed in our schools. I would hope that this board makes the decision to keep our children safe and would prove me wrong, prove that you're able to make an apolitical decision to keep our children safe by requiring masking in all of our schools. I intend to stay here through this meeting, hear the deliberations. I Wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your and, and, and one thing I want to make clear to people: if the governor calls a state of emergency and declares this state to have to mask everybody, then that you know we follow government CDC guidelines. But right now, this is where we are. I'm sorry to have to comment on that. Okay, Karen Fields. everyone. I'm Karen Fields. I'm president of the Queen Anne County Education Association and Centerville Middle School is my second home. So 
Um, QA CEA has relentlessly advocated throughout the pandemic for the BOE to follow the science-based guidelines from the Center for Disease Control. It is our understanding that Dr. Salins is working in close consultation with Dr. Ciatola to ensure that measures are taken to safely return students and staff to our schools and to take the precautions necessary to keep our schools open. We will continue to work in partnership with Dr. Salins, Supervisor advisors, administrators, all QACE members and parents to protect the health and safety of every student and every staff person in our school system. If we have learned anything over these last 18 months, we are stronger and safer when we work together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John uh, Hickson. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm at 127 Andrew Court, Centerville, Maryland. Uh, been there for 20 years, and some of you I know, and thank you and welcome. Thank you. So um, my concern here is I have five kids. My oldest just graduated, and I got four girls going into the school system as well, or it is in the school. My youngest is 12. We've been pretty active in a lot of sports and activities. We're very involved with communities, organizations, and just being out there. I have a diverse background. I just want to give you a little bit about me real quick. I grew up in poverty. I grew up as a minority, as Filipino. I went to uh, join the service, Air Force. I also was a police officer for DOD community, and I still do consulting work for the DOD community. So I'm well versed in exactly all kinds of things that's happening around the world. I have a lot more insights and intel, and I look at things a little differently. My concern here is that, and I feel for a lot of the parents, because my wife and I also do mental health counseling as well, that we're very concerned with people that have disabilities, people that are autoimmune deficiencies, and COVID's gonna affect them a lot more. I am also concerned about people that need to feel like we are part of a community because this is a great Queen Anne County that we've been here for 20 years. I grew up in Anne Arundel County. This is the place I'd rather be at. My kids love it here. This is all they've ever known. We started a family here and been here since then. So my thing is that we are very active in sports. We've been out there doing sports in schools. And I've, very, I've been very active with um, people staying fit and trying to um, participate in sporting events. My biggest concern is when we have a sporting events. I don't think there needs to be mask on these schools. To, I mean, not, when you're playing mask, that oxygen deprivation right there can really weaken your body, your thinking, and that also cause you to get hurt. I think we need to lighten up a little bit on the sporting events. And even in the school, I wear these masks too. But when I wear glasses, I can't see a thing because it's breathing out. These kids are sitting, you know, if my kids are in the back, they need to be able to read the board, they need to be participants, and they need to be effectively receiving and communicating back and forth. I think we all need to step back and look at where we can actually compromise as a team, as a unity, as this county has presented itself as being caring citizens. I think there's a lot to learn. There's a lot more doctors out there too that are talking about this. There's a lot of censorship, but I don't want to get into that. We want to make sure that we can give our kids here, Queen Anne's County, the best education possible. GPS signal lost. I'm sorry. Um, if we could, and don't be wrong, I, I, I get involved with a lot of communities and organizations, even from Cross County, I, I get involved with um, Talbot County, you know, um, Caroline County and here because I have kids and friends all over the place and we all need to come together and welcome people and provide the education safe for people. I think the mask right now will interfere with people's confidence and when they go out into the work area and in college, it's gonna affect them greatly. So I thank you for your time thank on you that comments. and thank you. I look thank forward you. to seeing you guys again. Thank you. At this time, that's all I have signed up. Does anybody else have it, uh, would like to speak at this time? Hearing nobody, okay. I thank everybody for your comments and uh, appreciate everybody's input. Okay, moving on, 701, um, human resource and substitute drivers report that we received. Mr. Smith, may I please make a motion to accept the human resources and substitute bus driver report as presented in closed session? Second. A motion and a second, any further discussion? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it 4-0. President Smith, if I could just take an opportunity to recognize some of the people that you just okay. approved in the report. And so we have several of them here this evening. And we're gonna start off with um, our new uh, director of HR, Michael Knoll. If you please stand and thank you and welcome. And congratulations. I'm very excited. And I'm not sure if Matt is here. Matt Kibler is here. Dr. Kibler is here. I don't see him. Um, so, yes, I will. Absolutely. So our new Director of Accountability and Implementation is Dr. Matthew Kibler. And so he might be just running the light. I know he was trying to plan on being here. And then some of our very own people here within our district, we have Cassandra Cornish. Mrs. Cornish was now the principal of We're very, very excited for her, as well as um, Miss Carrie Mitten, new principal at Mattapique Elementary. And of course, we had to replace both of these young ladies. So we have Mr. Daniel Miller, new AP at Queen Anne. And Miss Trisha Smith, um, new AP at Ken Island High School. Yeah. So congratulations. Um, welcome to your new positions. Yes, it's going to be a fantastic year, and I just look forward to getting to know each one of you um, in that capacity. Yeah, welcome on board and, and you know, sail ahead, and September's coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so if, could we entertain a picture? Yes, yeah, let's get everybody up. Yeah. We have a couple action items. Contract for approval for the ADP Enterprise E time for fiscal year 2022. Yes, and we have Ms. Towers here. Ms. Towers. Yes. yes. Uh, good evening, Dr. Salins, President Smith, board members. Tonight we bring before you for action a request for a contract approval for ADP time and attendance services. Just so you're familiar, ADP is our way that we track time. It's our software that we use on a daily basis to capture swipes. Over 300 codes are possibly entered in each day. You'll notice here, instead of a contract, we're grandfathered in at 600 employees swiping. And we'd like to ask for approval for this continuation of services under procurement policy 310, sole source item number two. You'll see that the annual amount is 66,000 and it is a budget, budgeted amount under unrestricted current expense. Do we have any questions at the time? Why is it sole sourced? It, it qualifies for sole source because it has to, it has to be customized with our accounting system. So under um, policy 310, sole source number two, compatibility of equipment and software, it, it takes a lot of time and behind the scenes to coordinate with ADP and to talk with our accounting software. It's not something that can be done overnight. It takes a lot of time and um, we have it where it's customized and it works well. 
I had a question about the invoice. Okay. It was slightly under the 5,500 that's opposed, as opposed to the yellow sheet. So. It, it, usually, it usually increases. We haven't gotten an invoice for July. Okay. It usually incre increases less than about 2% a year. So just a little bit of, of wiggle room in case we see an increase there. Okay. Thank you. And I see 600. We have more than 600 employees. Correct. We are grandfathered in at 600. If we were to go to a contract, it would be actual employees and actual slaves. So that would be, be up to 900 to 1,000. Correct. Other questions? I have a motion to approve this contract. I have a motion. Uh, may I make a motion, Mr. Smith, to approve the contract with ADP Enterprise E Time for fiscal year 2022, fiscal impact dollar amount of $66,000 annually, budget sources, unrestricted current expense budget. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it 4 0. Now we have uh, the third reading. First title. Title. Yes. Nine. So um, third and final reading for Title IX with the changes um, recommended by the board from last time incorporated into this. So Mr. Evans is here. Yes, good evening, Dr. Sounds, President evening. Smith, board members. For the record, my name's Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. Before you is the Title IX Policy 528 and its Regulation 528.1 for its third reading. This is just updating our, updating to current uh, laws and come on to think that. Correct. We have any other questions by the board? There's no financial packages update. Do I have a motion? That's been tabled and then they brought it down. So moved. A motion, first and second. second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Now we have for the third reading. Third and final reading for the student nutrition and health and wellness with Michael. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Michael Page. I am a curriculum supervisor, and I am bringing forward the Student Nutrition Health and Wellness Policy 640 and the Student Nutrition Health and Wellness Regulation 640.1. And this is an action item, and the superintendent recommends approval of the policy subject to the final edits and formatting. So I, I do have some questions. Go ahead. Yep. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I just had a format question. Oh, okay. Well, I have, actually have questions about the regulation, which I'm not sure if I should address it to you. I mean, since it's your, you're, you're in charge of the regulations. That's exactly right. So the policy is needs to be approved um, or not by the board, and the regulation actually is the purview of the superintendent. But if you have comments, I would certainly welcome those comments. So if we just approve the policy, can we just talk to you about the regulation? We absolutely that? can. So let's just, so the policy is not a problem. Yes, the regulation is simply there for your information. Because there was a couple, which I was like, there's no way this can happen in the regulation. So I just, how about if I just address that to you? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you very much. And, and I would like the board to know that uh, our prior, com our last conversation, we discussed making this solely a student nutrition and wellness policy. Um, and uh, if you look at the edits, staff was removed from there. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear that, uh, yeah, I those, saw that. those edits were made uh, yeah. Thank you, at Mr. your Page. request. That was a huge help. Yes, Thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. I just had a question on page one of the policy yes. in um, under A of the policy statement. I just didn't know if we wanted to put this policy embraces the Health Hunger Free Act of 2010 instead of embraces Health Hunger Free Act. I believe we can make that edit with. Right, <laughs> with absolutely. The, okay. And then my other one was just on the regulation, uh, page two under B, the health education. I wasn't sure um, 
I'm showing some whoa, whoa, of my... Whoa, 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 wait. We're on, we're on regulations now? Well, he, he was presenting both. Were you not? I'm sorry. Am I, I ahead thought, of I myself? Thought, we, I apologize. I think Cammie agreed and we just discussed that. We're with. only going to approve the policy. Any regulation changes, we would address it straight. All right, this was, again, it was a, a formatting. A formatting. Uh, sure. a formatting. Absolutely. And it could be um, showing my, um, that I don't know um, as much as I would like to think that I do. But under the health education, it's the QACPS apostrophe S will implement. And I didn't know if we wanted to put the apostrophe after the S because of ownership because of the S, right. That's all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Any other comments? It, it, it's a nice change. It, it did a great job after the last edit, so it was nice. We thank you for your comments. They were very, very appreciated. We other? Do I have a motion? So I make a motion to approve policy 640, student nutrition, health, and wellness. Second. Have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. 4 0. Thank you all. Thank you. And our next one is uh, Educational Equity 648. Good evening again, Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. Before you is the uh, Educational Equity Policy 640. It's the numbers. I apologize. 648. 648. So I do have a question, Mr. Evans. Um, did we we went back to almost the original policy from the state as I'm reading this? So the um, I, my understanding was Mr. Schiffinelli had made some edits, put that forward, and I believe that our attorney also weighed in, and that's what is before us tonight. So I see that we do not have a description of an under D. Definitions D, what marginalized student groups? And is that per Comar they don't have it defined as well, or are we just going to admit so my that we all think that we know what a marginalized group is? So my understanding was this reflected exactly what was required by Comar. I'm looking okay. at that okay. now, and that in marginalized groups is not defined in, okay. in the Comar. Thank you, sir. Mr. Burns, you've reviewed this and... Yes, Mr. Smith, uh, Darren Burns, uh, board attorney. Um, at following your last meeting, I worked with uh, the staff uh, and Dr. Salins uh, and through the committee, uh, recommend a few edits and changes. I think in response to Ms. Harper's question, we in fact just kind of scrubbed it to ensure that it was in sync with the Comar as the Comar is currently written. In interest of full disclosure, we know from as reported at least two meetings ago that the state continues to look at these regulations. So it is a, their rules may change, in which case if your policy has to change, your staff will will recommend that to you. It may be simply that the changes have to be in a regulation of some sort. So this will be a evolving process, but as you currently stands, Mr. Smith, this uh, this is in conformance with Maryland law. Do I have any other questions from the board? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Sorry, I have my glasses on. Con um, the final reading of policy 648 for educational equity. That's written. Second. Any further discussion? This has been on our agenda for a while and revised, so I'm going to have called this by roll. Can you just call? Mrs. Bennett? Yes. How do you vote? Yes. Yes. Mrs. Marset? Yes. Mrs. Harper? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Your policy carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans. Thank you very much. It's been a long process. And yeah. it's been it's yes. been it's been a privilege to work with you on this. Thank you. Our next thing that we have received and it's just getting there is our website redesign and branding. Um, yes, um members of the board. Um, I had shared with you that uh, I had some concerns about the website and just its usability, mm -hmm. and I think it's just time for it to get a facelift. Oh, and so um, the team has worked very hard to get something together. Um, we sent out the RFP process, um, had a committee that was that was assembled, reviewed all the different um, vendors that um, put in information and made a decision. And, um, and our new um, communication specialist is going to be presenting that to you this evening. Mm -hmm. 
and I think I tell you, a website, and that's one thing we have a lot of, not complaints, but concerns about people, you know, how to get to it, find things and stuff like that. I think that's been a, especially with the last year with COVID, trying to get things back. Um, I think up, getting this up to speed is an excellent idea. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Lynette Powerwaters. I'm the Queen Anne's County Communications Specialist for the public schools. Um, I'm here tonight um, to present the action item to seek board approval for the website design and branding for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. On July 20th, an RFP bid was issued by Queen Anne's County Public School website, Redesign and Branding. This proposal included the development of the primary website for Queen Anne's County Public Schools, as well as a cohesive rebranding of Queen Anne's County Public Schools and each of its individual schools. The new branding will provide the aesthetic design direction for the pr project. The Queen Anne's County Public School website will be designed on a multi-site platform that will ultimately incorporate each individual school as a site within a site. This proposal was scored by the following criteria. Experience with similar school districts, professional qualifications, technical response to RFP scope of work, timeline, training, and technical support plan. This was reviewed um, by the evaluation committee on the 3rd of August, and the fiscal impact dollar amount is $118,750 to set up with $3,000 a year for maintenance. This um, money will be provided by the ESSER two funds, and the contract term is three years with um, for additional one year period of up to four years for a total of seven possible years if renewed annually. At $3,000? Yes. I just had a couple questions about the um, bid process, because that was kind of a short process. How many bids did we get in? We received a total of five. Five, five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were any of them local? No. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then was, I know that we, when I looked at the bid process, when you were looking at the, um, what you were looking for in a successful bid, uh, money was not one of them. Do you know what the month, the range was, price range was for the five bids? We had a wide range and um, the proposals with the budget uh, monetary information was not presented to us until after we reviewed all of the information provided by the five um, web platform designers that submitted information. So we basically went ahead and looked at all of the information that we really wanted, which in which we thought would work best for our county. Great, thanks. You're welcome. So, so I have a question. Um, is, are the ESSER funds going to be paying for this every year, or are we going to have taken this out of uh, operating? Three years. Okay. Right. Uh, it would be the extent of the ESSER funds then, because uh, it supports COVID and, and, and things like that. So it supports the website, so it, parents have easy access to the information. Correct. And then it's an annual maintenance fee, so it's money up front, and then yearly it's the 3000 Currently, we use Blackboard, so uh, during that transition period, uh, we will actually have savings that we will have in our unrestricted budget once the ESSER funds are no longer available. Okay. That was my next question, is where, where were we were going to go for the money after ESSER dried up? Okay. Although, how much was the blackboard? I, I believe Josh took it last month, and I think it was around 30000 I'm not quite sure, I, but... I think, 35. I think it was 35. A year? Correct. Yes, that's that's, that's, that's 3,000. 10%. That's a huge, yes. And this is only, so the 118 comes out as a one-time cost ESSER. Right. So our annual, if we go past three years, is going to be minimal. Right. right. When you said, of course, it's centrally based, but each school will be able to have their own little website, and, but that will be run through Dr. Sands. That's going in. I mean, yes, it, Dr. I mean, Sands' office, yes will be this primary source of um, communication if there's any questions from each individual school. They can um, uh, bring the questions to us and then we will hopefully answer. Like a local school could put a PTA meeting on there. They could put whatever's going on. So if they're having yes. a fundraiser for a certain group, they could do things like that. individually once it comes to this. Yeah, the, the look of it, well, this to design the template. The mm -hmm. template's right. probably the best for the template. Once it's designed, will look similar at every school, but then they'll brand it to that school. So with their mascot and their colors and, yes. you know, to make it their own, but it'll have the same function. So you'll go to the same pace, place on the page to do the same things you would on our main site. So they'll all be intertwined together. So you have a parent who has a child at three different schools. They right. know where to look on the they website. They know where to go for PowerScore, 
or where they right. need to go to get the newsletters exactly. or the news releases. Yeah. We do have a lot of those, so yeah. it's yes. good. That's good. That's and good our thing. primary goal is to make it very user friendly. Absolutely. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes, absolutely. How many other questions? Mr. Smith, may I offer a motion to for the board to approve the contract with Maven and Smith LLC for $118,750 of them with a yearly maintenance of $3,000 uh, budget source ESSER two funds? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Thank All you, those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. <coughs> Thank you. I guess Jane's still up. different stakeholder group to pull together this update for everyone and while we know it's not perfect we certainly have a, a good head start on it everyone. I'm Amy Hudak, Assistant Superintendent. Um, so I kind of want to go back because I do want to share with you um, a presentation that has been compiled and it's accolades for the school. So I would like to preface the Safe Schools um, presentation with this so um, this is part of the spotlight that yes we, you know we're we're all new at this right now our team's coming together so yeah. we appreciate your patience but this was actually um, supposed to be posted but it was done but we did we missed the link to get it on to Amy's when she was speaking so she didn't have it to reference so we got it loaded for you and now that she's on the stage we're gonna go through yeah so, so typically so I will present this when I do my piece for what is happening. So what you see here is Churchill Elementary School. This is their session two um, summer school. Um, it is, um, there are 47 students and staff, and I guess they were the ones that were recognized, so the shining star, so I guess they're referencing the future is so bright, they gotta wear shades, so, <laughs> so those kiddos. And then we have Mattapique Elementary School. Um, we've got, painting going on down there, so getting a fresh coat of paint. And then here are our students that are at recess for summer school. And then we have Sudlersville Elementary School. Um, it's PFY, so the Partnering for Youth program, and they're doing uh, they're drumming on buckets, which I, that's, I'm, I'm sure I can hear it. <laughs> Looking at the picture, I can hear it. Um, Kennard Elementary School, um, and it is sparkling. Look at the floor shining. Um, big smiles with the custodians. They're working on cleaning all the buildings. And then you have Bayside Elementary School. This is their session two. They're at Ken Island High School, and I can only imagine that, that those students are loving being at the two high schools. Uh, but they're working on reading and math skills. And then you have Centerville Elementary. This is the program that I referenced. So the summer migrant program. And then Graysonville Elementary School, um, this is their session too. So all of the schools had two different sessions, as, as you know, so everybody's in session two at this time. And here's Mattapique Middle. There's Dr. McCoy. She says summer school is cool. These are, these are uh, students that are, as you can see, the, the picture on the left, they're at Ken Island High School. 
there's Stevensville, again, there at, there at Ken Island as well, session two. And then Sudlersville, something a little unique. Um, they're doing their fifth grade boot camp, which is awesome. Um, they bring the kids in, they do a scavenger hunt, um, learning about each other. They do the beach ball activity, and then they sat in Adirondack chairs and had ice cream. And here's Ken Island High School. You got athletic fields that are open. And then we have a former uh, Ken Island student that did 130 hours as an intern at the Ken Island Federation uh, for art. All right, please. And in that same vein, we have two Queen Anne's County High School students that were awarded $750 scholarships through the Ken Island Federation for art. And there are their two art pieces that were displayed. That is not their teacher, but that is Miss Sage, um, who was a former teacher of at least one of the students. And then Queen Anne's County High School, uh, student schedules are nearly finished. That's when this was sent out, and I do know that they have been sent to students, and they are fully staffed. So all teacher positions. Yay. Good. And then our food service folks, um, so still doing the Wednesday evening distribution, um, 300 to 350 meals, and the kids are getting breakfast and lunch for seven days in those meal bags. So they are hard at work. I know they come in early, mm -hmm. and they are working hard. So that is the spotlight. That's great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. And thank you for letting me present that, because oh, that yeah. would be sad if I didn't get to share it with everybody. So, um, <laughs> all right, so what you have in front of you are um, the strategies for opening, reopening schools, and um, so we received this information in, in mid-July and the direction, I'm just gonna kind of tell you the process. So um, we were given the directive to create a safe uh, plan for re reopening schools. The options we were presented with um, were to either take the plan, the reopening plan that was presented last year and edit it or start from scratch. Um, and then it discussed the strategies, the requirements, as you know, as we're referring to them, and they refer to them as requirements as well. And that's this document. Um, and then what you see is the 2020 requirements, and then the um, 2021 requirements that are placed right beside. Um, the other requirement and there were 13 last year and they condensed one of them um, so they took seven and eight and they combined them and then they omitted the 12th requirement so this year we have 11 but the language is very much the same there are a few um, few of them that have been massaged and and are more relevant to this year um, but they are reflective of those same requirements as last year with, with the exceptions of what I explained. Um, so in essence, so um, the plan requires one, how the school system will maintain the health and safety of students, educators, and other school and school system staff, um, how the school system will ensure the continuity of services, including but not limited to um, special um, program students, um, so academic needs of students and staff, social, emotional, mental health, and other needs, which may include uh, student health and food services. Um, the school system is then required periodically, and that is every six months at least to revisit the reopening plan, the safe reopening plan, um, up until the year 2024. Um, so 
but no less than the six months. So if so, it's a fluid document. It is a draft document. Um, we we still have um, one set of folks that need to look at it, and that's the administrators um, at next week's retreat. We have presented the reopening plan to, and it has been through um, the the curriculum and instruction team, the exec team, the blueprint team, um, and 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 on the blueprint team, it has a lot of community members. So we've gotten feedback and all of the feedback that was given during the blueprint meeting was then taken back and, and uh, presented to the curriculum and instruction. And we went through it with a fine tooth comb and then I shared that feedback and then it was embedded. So um, we've taken all of the feedback, we've incorporated it, but again, it's still, um, needs to be massaged some just to make sure that we are hitting all those spots. We just received from MSDE this week a rubric. So that will help us also make sure that we have all of the components in. And this is due on August the 13th. Yes. Yeah, so. this, this document is due on the 13th, um, showing where everything is and then we will also send the plan. And this is this is a piece of the ESSER application as well. So if something happens and we have, God forbid, we don't have it happen, mm. the yes. COVID-19 rears mm -hmm. its ugly head, number 12 will be added back in the mix. Um, they haven't said that, but okay. it is a fluid document, Ms. Harper. I believe that um, if things need to be adjusted, then it, um, it will be addressed and given to us and then um, with that directive, we will go back and revisit it. Of course, we do have our previous document. Right. Not that it's perfect, but we will have somewhere to springboard. It's not that we would have to start from scratch. Great. But we're using the best information we have at the time. And if, Pardon me? We're using our best information and numbers that we have at the time. Absolutely. And if something warrants a change, then we, uh, we adapt Right, we will make an informed decision based on the data that is available to us. And adjust the plan accordingly. Yes. So there, my understanding is, you need an approval because it's got to do by August the 13th, and certainly we don't meet between now and then. This is any changes that would come to this, it could be sent back to the board. Uh, yes, by, sir. And then look, let us look at it and mm -hmm. reevaluate if uh, we had something that you know we felt uncomfortable with. Yes, we just have that one um, group to look at it. Um, I, I mean, don't anticipate. If it's not change, it's not a problem. Yep. But I think that if there's any changes, especially mm -hmm. some changes, it should come back to be reviewed by the board, or at least the board comment on it and sure. find out if we're saying Absolutely, thing. yeah. Certainly we can um, have that prepared for you on the 18th mm -hmm. at that meeting if there is anything. Or we can just have it prepared for you, period. But, but it's got to be submitted, it's gotta be submitted could, on the 13th. Right, exactly. So what I'm thinking is if we okay this tonight as is with some maybe some just minor changes and one last thing, mm -hmm. if any of those changes are substantial or anything that we need to see, I'd like to see it. Absolutely. And then the board can uh, respond to you. Sure, sure. That. okay. Would that be okay with board members? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I have a motion to... Uh, adopt this I make a motion sir to accept the strategies for reopening process for the 2021 20, 2022 school year second second any further discussion all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. aye seven four up thank you thank you thank you, thank you. lots of hard work um, board members, Dr. Kibler is here. Um, Yay. And I will, I will admit this is uh, partially probably my fault because I told him, look, I know we're going to have public comments, so he's got young ones at home. Make sure you get them, you know, do what you need to do with them before you come. So I, we really do appreciate you coming, but I'd like to present to you Dr. Matthew uh, Kibler, the new uh, Director of Accountability and Implementation for Caroline County Public Schools. I mean, Caroline County County Public Schools. Sorry. <laughs> Habits die hard. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let's get a picture. Oh, sorry. 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 Oh, sorry
And I made sure. Yeah, not named after me. Your father, grandfather? No, I came from the Western Shore. <laughs> <laughs> Just for our public comment. Um, no, sir. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. no. I'm sorry. Any discussion for future action? Uh, monthly we have, we have monthly expenditures, sir. Monthly sir. Monthly monthly sir. Monthly sir. Gotcha. I'm sorry, Jane. Jane's, Jane's okay. got to uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, her Jane. number. Keep it straight. <laughs> Uh, good evening again. Uh, tonight we bring before you the monthly expenditures for period 13. This is our closeout period for fiscal year 21. We're still in the process of um, paying the June bills, reconciling out the account, and closing out. So um, bring before you tonight those expenditures along with the SR2 de detail of expenditures. So we still have a few more bills outstanding? Correct, and reconciliations, one being the health care one. This, this little number I see on page eight and twelve is not exactly right yet. It's 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 getting close. <laughs> so I have to go after healthcare. Is it going to change a lot? Do you think? I don't. I'm just gonna put you. I mean, you don't know. Okay, it's just a nice number to have. Okay. So, uh, uh, going to the ESSER uh, two detail. Yes. We still have uh, roughly two point eight left. Right. Is that the last? Okay, that's what I was looking at. Thank you. We'll see additional expenditures um, this next week with the closeout of summer school mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. When is the last day of summer school for this year? This week? This week. Okay. I mean, two, okay, I guess. Next week. Next, next week. week. Next oh, the 12th tw then. Yeah. And I hear our numbers have been pretty good with that. I mean, you haven't questions? heard yet? You haven't heard the numbers for this coming year? Mm -mm. Not yet. Waiting with bated breath. <laughs> Any other questions for Jane? Ah, we can move on. Yeah. Do you need me to reread this? Uh, uh, first, any items, any future, any, anybody got any things for the next meeting that they'd have to bring up or anything? Okay, move on to public comment. Does anybody? Uh, well, you, heard, you were here the first time, so you were here. Okay. Just state your name and address, Raven Bishop. <laughs> Got that down. Oh, good. You know me by name. <laughs> we, 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 we listen to what you're saying. I'm really pleased to hear that. Uh, so again, Raven Bishop, 719 Main Street, Churchill. Um, so first, I want to say that I, I stuck it out because I wanted to hear the discussion of the safe reopening plan. I was pleased to hear that this plan is fluid and that this board is um, willing to change plans and adapt to the changing COVID situation. Um, I understand that the communication to parents will happen on the 16th, and I would like to urge um, Queen Anne's County Public Schools to make transparent how the data that's available to you is used to make these decisions. So instead of saying like, we'll use whatever data is available to us, we've made this decision based on data and metrics. It would be really useful to say, if the metric is this, then this school system does this. That makes transparent to parents and community members how the decisions are made. And then we will know that the decision is based on things that are not political. That would be the ideal. Um, so I would really urge this board um, as a parent to make transparent the decision-making process and to give us some metrics that we can look towards too so we can make informed decisions for our families. Thank you, and again, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity thank to speak. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other person for public comment? Okay. Uh, our future meetings. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. I read yes. just one second too. No, ma'am. <laughs> Um, I did not sign the sheet yet. My name is Aaron Zimmerman. I live at 104 East Brook Drive in Centerville. Um, 
Welcome Thank to you. you. Um, we are glad to have you, although I do not envy your position. This time of year is very, very difficult, and there's nothing easy about it. Um, my family and I moved to Centerville 10 years ago. Um, we moved from Anne Arundel County. My husband and I have five children, and we kept coming over here and feeling the release of stress every time we drove over the bridge and fell in love with this town and the culture here. Um, we are proud to say we live in Centerville. Um, we began schooling here when we moved. My son Noah was already in kindergarten, so he began his kindergarten years at Centerville Elementary School. Um, like I said, I have five kids, and they have all been in the public school system since day one. Um, I know that last year whew, threw everyone for a loop, and you guys did the absolute best you could do to make the best plan and put that forward. Um, for me and our family, just with having five kids, um, I could not manage all those emails from all those teachers. So we decided to come home and do homeschool last year. Also, I just personally was not a fan. I didn't want them sitting on computers six hours a day. I know that's no one's heart is for that to be happening, but was definitely necessary with what happened last year. Um, we have always felt safe and secure sending our kids to school here. Where we lived, there were teeny tiny pockets of schools that were deemed like the best schools or the safest schools to send your kids to, and it was impossible to get into. When moving over here, it was a safe environment with open arms for all kids to come, and I loved how much my kids have blossomed here throughout the years. Um, my heart breaks for Raven, as she shared, she has an eight-year-old son, with um, specific situation that he's not eligible for a vaccine. Um, similarly, my heart breaks for the families who have kids who are dealing mentally and emotionally severely because of what had to happen last year. Um, there's no easy spot and definitely a rock and a hard place and my heart reaches out to all of you guys who have to sit here and make these difficult decisions and how do you make a decision for all when there are so many variables. Um, how can we protect, protect those kids who are compromised healthy and teachers and workers, everybody in the buildings compromised with health issues as well as the people who um, get compromised emotionally or mentally? I don't know the answer to that. I'm not expecting you all to know the answer to that and I know that's what we're all working towards. Um, for me personally, I believe for masks on kids day in and day out, um, can definitely be a major hindrance to their emotional well-being, to their mental well-being. Um, I don't know how you police that or regulate that. Um, currently, I'm grateful for it being an option, whether they want to wear masks or not. Again, Raven, my heart reaches out to other families that are in a difficult situation where they, they need that to be the reality. But that is it. That is all I had to share, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. you. Do you have any other public comment? Okay, thank you. Our future meetings, uh, we do have a workshop scheduled on the 18th of this month. Our next regular board meeting will be September the 1st. Uh, we'll be back in school by then. And I also suggest everybody next week to attend the Queen Anne's County Fair. It runs next week at the 4-H Park. Uh, very oriented family thing. I think uh, a couple of foods we have out there. We do. And things yep. of that nature. Uh, yes, there's also things. a lot of things out there to see. It's, it's, it, and you'll see a lot of people you don't see all year. I, I recommend highly to go there. Do board members have anything? Thank you, everybody, for yes, attending. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Sandwich? Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We're adjourned.